Hello, welcome to Match Day Live. With me tonight is a man that played 40 times in Europe for the Reds. It is, of course, the legend that is uh, Mr. Gary Pallister. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has had many teammates in his time with Manchester United. One of them has brought me here to LA, home of the Sun, Sand, movie stars and music stars. And now, David Beckham. Which other teammates do you keep in touch with? Do they keep you up to date with what Sir Alex Ferguson has uh, been telling them in the dressing room? <laughs> um, no, not really. Well, every now and again. I don't want to get any of the players into trouble. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday night at the Red Cafe, where tonight we're going to be looking at the rest of the season and the title run, and it's certainly hotting up at the top. We're also going to be taking a look at some of the nominees for player of this season. And to do that, I'm joined by a player that you probably picked in the 90s as your player of the season. He said he thought that Edwin van der Sar was a manufactured player and not one of the best that he's seen in the world. Why do you think he came out and said I that? I think he was saying he wasn't a naturally, uh, naturally gifted mm. goalkeeper. He had to work at it. Up next, it's AC Milan versus Boca Juniors for the third place in this competition to celebrate 100 years of the Audi brand. I can take you now to our commentary team of David Stell and Lou Macari to take you through the next 90 minutes of action. And it was, in fact, actually Christmas Eve that you made your first ever professional debut as a 16-year-old. Oh, you're going back a few yes. years now. Yeah, 53 yeah. years, in fact. Out of order. <laughs> Out of order, yes. Yes. Told off already. <laughs> we'll be bringing you all the live shots of the players arriving, the fans arriving, wives and girlfriends, everything you could possibly imagine will be with you this evening on MUTV. The bulk of the United fans will be here in the stadium and the East Stand behind me. The rest of the fans, the Aston Villa half, will be in the West Stand. Now, this League Cup final is also known as the Fans Final. Thank you, Will. As you were just discussing there, there are a couple of players who are away with international duty. Daniel Drinkwater and Danny Welbeck have both been called up to the England under-19 side. And it certainly, for me, was a turning point in the game. Yeah, it definitely was. And United, of course, went on to win and retain the trophy successfully. We're here live at Wembley. We're still going to take more of your calls. 0845 602 6899 is the number. I'm sure you know it by now. How could you forget? 6899. That's all you need to know. Talk us through the day that you signed for United. Talk us through the outfit and the signing as well. So, see, I've been over for that outfit, right? <laughs> Well, that is an unbelievable suit, I stand by that suit even today. And finally, Liverpool crashed out, they're in the Europa League. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you get what you deserve, don't you? That sick feeling that you mentioned, do you think that's sort of down to nerves, not knowing what kind of reception you'll get? No, it was just down to missing the club and, and missing being part of Manchester United. We must start with news that bomb blasts in Indonesia have forced a change in United's planned visit to the country. Manchester United have taken the decision to cancel the Indonesian leg of their Asia tour following fatal explosions which killed at least nine people and injured a further 50. Hello, welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff. We're here in Rome, in Italy, at the Stadio Olimpico. Real commiserations, but unfortunately suffered disappointment on what has been a truly remarkable season for Manchester United. Um, yeah, I mean, it just it's ended on a, on a sour note. San Siro by night in a build-up to a match. It's very different from the stadium in the daytime. The fans are building up to this derby, Della Maddalena, which is Inter Milan versus AC Milan. What's your relationship like with Sir Alex Ferguson, and has it changed <laughs> since you left? No. no, it's great. Alex, do you see Ben Foster as being sort of the permanent replacement whilst Edwin is out? It's up to Ben. OK, well, those are the head-to-head -head stats between the two teams. We'll be looking at the stats between the two managers coming up shortly. But uh, Arsenal are currently third in the league, but it's uh, so close at the top. They've been changing positions with both Chelsea and United fairly frequently over the past couple of weeks. And it's good to see that the whole team that you're, of course, with, they're here watching the game as well and, and taking it in. And you're getting to know them a little bit more gradually as the day goes along and, of course, as the weeks go on as well. Yeah, well, it is, it, you know, because of the language barrier. He is at the moment undergoing a specialist rehabilitation program in Vail in the USA, which is, of course, where he had his surgery. And he's staying out there with the surgeon and the right people to make sure that he isn't rushed back. Just looking at um, Hull and, and the fixtures coming up, they, of course, play just, what, almost 48 hours after facing United. So would you imagine that Phil Brown will be resting players for the United game? I never thought about that one. We can hear from one man who started the game yesterday and played a full 90 minutes as well. He's back from Plymouth and certainly enjoying himself at Manchester United so far. It's Craig Cathcart. 
Thank you. Yes, I have just spoken to Sir Alex Ferguson, who's confirmed today's team news, and the boss has made wholesale changes from the side which edged Sunday's epic Manchester derby. Michael Carrick and Michael Owen are the only players to start against Mick McCarthy's Wolves, also featured against Manchester City. Let's just take a look at the formation now, and the boss looks to have gone for a 4-4-2, with Kiko Makeda up front, partnering Michael Owen. Do you still feel the pressure on you from maybe fans and critics to, to score more goals? To me, it's all about winning the, the game, you know? Welcome back. We're live at the Emirates and Lou Macari joins me. And what a journey it's been to get us here today to the second leg of the Champions League semi-final. Yeah, let's hope the opportunities do fall to Michael Owen today, who starts alongside Wayne Rooney. They've actually only partnered at each other in a starting lineup four times in all competitions this season. There was two wins and two defeats. The last was a defeat to Fulham. But in those four games, neither has scored. scored yeah. Surprising. Welcome back to a very wet and, and windy, windy and Wembley. Cold. I'm terribly sorry. I'm trying to hold on to this umbrella as well as keep my hair in tip top shape and keep my guest Lou Macari dry as well. And of course, bring you all the best post match reaction, which we're going to do now. You can hear from Sir Alex Ferguson. OK, the thoughts of Sir Alex Ferguson with our reporter Stuart Gardner. We'll be bringing you more post-match reaction from the tunnel as well as the stats, the table, the rest of the scores from the afternoon. But just uh, reflecting on what Sir Alex Ferguson said there, he brought out a few key points. Would you agree pretty much with his summation of the game? Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought he was right. Hi, I'm just with a, a few of the boys who were involved today. Owen, what an unbelievable day. How are you feeling right now? I think we feel good. Uh, I think we're all looking forward to the night <laughs> tonight and uh, hopefully we'll have a good night. You're obviously all in very good spirits, as you'd imagine, so is tonight really a time to, to relax and reflect on, on an unbelievable season? Not yet. We still have the Champions League right. final that we want to win, so um, yeah. tonight we'll have some fun and, and uh, we'll get ready for the next game. Are you able to, to sort of soak up the atmosphere at Wigan and just really take it in, you know, the big achievement of this season? Well, it was a tense game. I think it was, um, you know, it was difficult at times, but I thought we defended well. And I think when Giggsy came on, he changed the game and uh, he scored the second goal. Okay. And, and Nani, you enjoyed today, did you? Yeah. Yes, I'm very happy.